Kia ora team and welcome to episode 37 of Yarns with Beef and Matt, brought to you by Alice, Katie and Frog Grips. I'm Beef. I'm Matt. And joining us today, she is a Commonwealth Games athlete. She is a gladiator, a mum and one of Aotearoa's homegrown heroes, an absolute legend in the sport of CrossFit. Ladies and gentlemen, Alethea Boone! How are you, mate? Accents on the O's, love it. Hey, everyone. Oh, yeah, he went low, I went high. Oh, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I was put on the spot, Alethea. Just harmonies, harmonies. <laughs> I told him prior, I was like, you got me on the boon, eh? He's like, mm. <laughs> I don't do intros. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, mate? I'm good, thanks. How you boys? Good. Good. Very good. It's, uh, it's a bit weird over here at the moment, but... Yeah. Yeah, sorry, if it does start pissing down um, and it gets a bit noisy, just talk a bit louder. But yeah, fuck, she's been pretty bad. <laughs> Um, all good, all good. Anyway, look, how we want to start these things, as uh, everyone listening knows, um, is we want to go way back to the, the young Alethea kicking around in high school, maybe even before that, but what was the young Alethea up to? Yeah, young Alethea. So I grew up out in West Auckland in Massey, and um, it was at the age of five, where she went to Fiji, lived back in Fiji for a while, and then came back to New Zealand. Mm. Um, I remember watching Nikki Jenkins on TV win gold medal in vault for gymnastics. Oh, okay. And it was at that time that I actually said to my mum, I would like to do that. Nice. As in, I would like to go to Commonwealth Games and do what Nikki Jenkins did. Well, at least be there. And um, that's that's purely what kicked off my Alethea Boone sporting endeavours. <laughs> right. How good. Yeah, but I grew up out west. Um, I started gymnastics at the age of eight. I uh, went pretty quickly through the development stages of the sport. Mm. I think it was my first gymnastic class I walked in. It was a recreational class. You know, you know how they do like a, come on, guys, let's kick up to a handstand. And I kicked up and I held a handstand for like over 20 seconds. And oh, then wow. the coach straight away from that recreational class was like, you, come here. And I went straight into a competitive class oh, wow. <laughs> from back then. And um, gymnastics was my sport as a kid. Mm. Didn't really have much time for anything else because we had to reduce the injury rates. So gymnastics was pretty much it. Went to high school out of Westlake Girls over North Shore, still living out west, mm. um, purely because the training center for the elite team was out over North Shore at North Harbour Gymnastics. Nice. So that was me then. After I decided I'd wound up my elite gymnastics career, I ended up going to University of America, competing there on a D1 scholarship. Freaking loved it. Had the best yeah. experience of my life. Um, after that, moved back to New Zealand, had a few health stuff happen that pretty much stopped me dead in my tracks. And then it was after that, that I decided to kind of find a new way to get fit. And I discovered CrossFit, but in a nutshell, that was pretty much me, my sporting life. What, um, what age did you go over to the States? I was late. So I ended up doing college gymnastics. I went at the age of 21. Right. And what so college? I from elite, yeah. University. Oh, which, which one was it? Brigham Young University in Utah. Right. Okay. D1 scholarship. Yeah. Cause that's, that's the big stuff. Hey, eh? that's, I, I don't yeah. know much about university or college in America, but you, you, I hear D1 thrown around a lot. So that's like, yeah, Top that's dogs. up there, right? Yeah. When I mean, there's like D3 is like a lower tier D2 and D1 is like the top tier of colleges or universities. Yeah. Nice. Um, would you end up, sorry, I'm just going to, no, no, I know you want to say something, no, no. but <laughs> um, cause I know was Emily Bridges cause she's a, a fantastic CrossFit athlete as well. Obviously, she doesn't compete anymore, but she was a D1 gymnast as well. Did you ever cross paths with her? No, I no? never actually crossed paths with her. I'm not sure if we actually competed around the same time or not. Yeah. I'm pretty old, mate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she's a bit younger than I am. Yeah, I was just trying, because she's my age and I'm, I'm 32. So you maybe, oh, maybe. Young yeah. pup, you're pretty much a baby. <laughs> oh, thanks for saying that, because oh, these guys will call one. me the old you one, got man. one. <laughs> Thanks, Alethea. We'll keep you on. <laughs> um, those um, you, you just mentioned this. You had some health troubles when you came back. Um, if mm -hmm. you can, do, do you want to dive into those? Like, what what happened that sort of stopped you in your tracks? Um, I had some pretty sensitive uh, sensitive surgery to my abdomen area, um, and as a result of that surgery, I suffered from uh, bilateral pulmonary embolism. So I had clots in both lungs and mm. I couldn't breathe and pretty much nearly died. Holy shit. Yeah. Just some so, minor issues then. Holy. Just, just some minor <laughs> issues. Yeah. Um, I, I, 
I was battling the abdominal issues as well. So I was recovering from that stuff. Um, mm. It was like a movie. I ended up having every complication that could have gone wrong went wrong. And as a result, about it took me six months afterwards to actually be able to function as a normal human being. So simple tasks once I got to hospital, which I was in hospital for ages, it took me like six months to build up to be able to do a five kilometer like fun run. Right. From someone that was super, super fit. Yeah. Oh shit, we lost you. Oh no. Well anyway, well um we seem to be back online, so I guess we'll we'll carry on where you were. We um Yeah. Yeah, so you just built yourself back up to being able to run a five K. Um from there you got into CrossFit. Was that just like yeah, how how did the journey into CrossFit happen from there? Because that's some pretty major, yeah. I mean, was a fitness. I guess what I'm trying to say is, did you ever feel like you were going to be able to 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 be an athlete again after that? Um, no, I didn't think I'd ever be an athlete after retiring after gymnastics. Gymnastics was always my main sport. Then once I got sick, I just thought it's important to maintain some level of strength and fitness to be healthy for life. Right. Plus, I'm Polynesian, I like to eat, and I need to burn those calories somehow. <laughs> so <laughs> there, that's when I thought, well, we moved to Sydney because I needed a bit of a change um, after that whole ordeal. Mm. And then I Googled a different way to get fit when I was sitting in the office one day and uh, CrossFit came up. So right. I emailed the local CrossFit gym, they emailed me back. I showed up for a fundamental class. But when I first walked into the class, there was like some competitive athletes training. And I wasn't a one to throw around weights or anything. And I walked in, saw them throwing around weights, grunting, and I walked straight back out. I was, oh, really? so, intimidated. <laughs> I was so intimidated. That wasn't my jam. Yeah. And I remember calling my partner and he's like, don't be an egg, go back inside. Yeah. So I went back inside, met with one of the coaches and then I ended up meeting a girl who's now my lifelong friend, Karen, and we've been friends since day one. And I stuck to it. Yeah. And I stayed in the fundamental class for like a whole month. Oh, wow. Shit, that's awesome. What year was that? Was that 2014? I started, I think it was like May 2013. So I didn't actually know what CrossFit was. Didn't even know the CrossFit Games. Mm. Uh, people were obviously training for regionals at the time. That's why they were so intense. Um, but yeah, that's when I started my journey. So a year later, you have your first Open and yep. you do pretty well for your first open i didn't do too bad yeah yeah um, um yeah so i had zero anticipation to compete though let's be honest i after when i came into the sport um it was purely just to get fit hmm. i just wanted to get healthy because i was very broken after gymnastics I had tons of injuries and then it wasn't actually until someone said that um i couldn't or you're not good enough that it kind of sparked something in me oh really yeah who said that? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't really matter, but I should thank them because I've had a bloody good time. <laughs> yeah, damn, were they wrong? You had that like uh, that Jordan moment of, oh, okay, I'll show Took you. that personally. <laughs> so yeah. 2014, you do incredibly well. Just miss out on court, on regionals, but uh, you do incredibly well. Oh, I didn't actually. I actually qualified. Oh, did you qualify? Because you didn't do the 2014? Hang on. I did. So I did 2014 Open. I qualified in 16th place. Yeah. And then I went team. That's why it's not coming up. That's why. Yeah. There you go. So your first year you went team. Um, to be fair, Beef actually said you went team and I couldn't find it anywhere. So that's on me. Um, <laughs> yeah. So you went team. You went yeah. to the games on that team? Yep. And placed fifth? I think so. I can't remember. It's so long ago. And we, this had a is, pretty, we had a pretty good team. This is a stat that Brandon has come up with. You are currently the top place Oceania team ever at the CrossFit Games. I believe that's the truth and we will maintain that one. Good. That is awesome. <laughs> for, now, for now, for now. Have you seen the teams coming out of the region Mate. this year? Oh, this, well, we'll get into it. This, <laughs> this year's <gasps> stacked, man. <laughs> I was, um, yeah, I had written it down in my notes that that team, I believe, still holds the record for the best Oceanic team uh, over at the Games. Uh, I did want to ask sort of how was that season for you? Because that must have been phenomenal. Oh, it was absolutely incredible. It is definitely one of the most funnest years I've had. Mm. Um, I was on the team with 
CrossFit Active. So that was Chad McKay's gym back then. And our coach was Adam Perry and Luke Starr. And it was, we all had one common goal. We all did our jobs. We didn't have to always train together to be able to be a good team, but we knew the driving force behind it. And um, I was the, it was me and one other that hadn't been to the games before. So we were kind of the followers. Right. The other guys led us through the whole experience. But um, that was the first time that soft worm came in. And I think we did really well in the worm sprint. Mm. And yeah, it was also a great experience. Yeah. But funny thing is, uh, I couldn't swim. Okay. <laughs> that was so the first year, announced... second year of the pool, wasn't it? First year at the beach. Yeah. So 2013, they had the pool. 2014, I remember yeah, Easy Muhammad. Yeah, I remember the um, the swimming in the beach. Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah, good. the beach, and so luckily they gave us that. What is that? That board, that flotation device. So yeah. they looked. My team literally chucked me on the board and just said, "Hold on, don't move." And I was busy, like I swear, tears coming down my eyes. I thought I was <laughs> yeah. gonna die. <laughs> oh, no. Just kick your feet. Just stay on there and kick Pretty your much. feet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, how good! That's um, yeah, that's amazing. I I mentioned that we're having a chat with you to a few of the uh, the people back home, and one of them has asked me to ask you: Has Chad McKay still got the best snatch in Oceania? <laughs> <laughs> he definitely got the. I swear, he still got the best photos out there floating of the snatches. Mm. Like, because he was like shredded. He still yeah. is pretty damn like strong. <laughs> yeah. Shit, yeah. But he was technically proficient. He really liked working on his technique, and I think yeah. that's that shows through the games teams that actually qualified through to regionals because mm. they were so like into hammering technique before we even put weight on the bar. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, there's your answer team. Yeah. Um, yeah, we, we sort of touched on it briefly, but looking at the teams division this year, what do you reckon? Oh that, man, crazy. I'm so hopeful. I'm so hopeful that we're going to get a team on that podium. Oh, sure. We are well overdue. We have the goods. We yeah. have the athletes there. And with, there's like tons of rivalry going on between the teams within our region. I just want them to fully be able to show that and express it on the world stage. 100%. 100%. Even semifinals is not a given. It's like there is no uh -uh. just one decent team. There's so many coming out of Oceania there's this so year. There's so many. So many. And you got to remember that no one's peaking for quarterfinals. No. Yeah. So the teams that we see in quarterfinals are going to be looking completely different by the time they show up at Torian. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, shit, yeah. I mean, it, uh, Laura Clifton's team is looking stacked. I didn't even know they were putting together a team, but that is a stacked team. <laughs> um, Gosh, wasn't that a bit of a spanner in the works, dethroning our good old Mayhem Torian? Yeah, yeah. I don't think they're going to take that lightly. But um, <laughs> but it's, it's if so... If anything, if I know Christy and Royce and that, they're going to be using that as fuel. Yeah. Even, oh. um, even Cara and... Um, Khan's team, yeah. I mean, we were all looking at them under a microscope, and now they'll be like, "Oh shit, hang on." So yeah, it's gonna be. I can't wait, Praetorian man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I might not that, even watch that, the games. Uh, that Mayhem Thunder team, they're just they're just doing what's needed to be done until it matters. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Stay quiet, say, stay yeah. in the fight. Yep. And then come out firing. That's um, it. So you have been obviously your um, Super well known, and for many reasons, you've got a long list of accomplishments uh, for yourself. But we do predominantly know you as the CrossFit athlete, as a CrossFit Games athlete. Uh, been to yeah. the Games now on a team, individually, and as in the Masters division. Of mm -hmm. the three, which of them would you say is the most fun to compete in, and then which would you say is the most rewarding to compete in? Yeah. Okay, well, that's a good question. Um, the most fun would have had to be the team. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was, you've just got the banter that goes on. Banter's a big thing for me. If there's good banter, I'm having good vibes. <laughs> <when we're going. laughs> that's a, <laughs> that's an Oceania thing, eh? Yeah, for real. But the team's a good one because you get to, you get to work together. You get to hide, hide others' weaknesses and also pull other people up with your strengths. Yeah. So I really, really enjoyed that experience. That was super, super fun. Um, the most rewarding, uh, I'd have to say the individual route's pretty dang rewarding. If you qualify as an individual to the CrossFit Games, you are next level. You're like, top dog. Yeah. What it, I'll be honest, what it takes to qualify as an individual in the open category compared to masters or a team, um, it's significantly harder. Significantly harder, requires a lot more time, requires a lot more up here. Mm. 
Oh, 100%. And um, on your individual career, there was, um, I'm not too well versed, but I believe there was a year that didn't go very well for you. Um, you ruptured your Achilles or something along the lines? Yeah, yeah. I ruptured my Achilles in 2016. Um, I think it was Friday night in the um, tennis stadium, which is an ab- was, was an absolute vibe. Probably one of the best memories that I have is competing in the tennis stadium right. in Carson. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I, it was a dead, not deadlift, it was box jump dead ball. And that's usually my jam. Yeah. And I thought, okay, I'm going to go for this. Um, I went to rebound box jump. I can't remember which rep it was. And I felt something just pop. And I looked down, I tried to jump again. My leg wasn't connected, my right leg. I thought I'd probably just pop my calf. And then I realized, oh, yeah, no, my foot's dangling. I'm done. That's, that's crazy. Um, how's your mindset after sort of realizing um, what had just happened? Because, I mean, you just said it yourself, the amount of sort of commitment and effort that you have to put in to even qualify for Torian, let alone the games, or semifinals, let alone the games. You know, how's your mindset once you realize that all that hard work has sort of come and ended this way? Yeah. Oh, as soon as it happened and then I realized it was something bad and I had to call the medic, I didn't feel bad for myself. I absolutely just felt like I'd let everyone down. Oh, wow. I'd let everyone that put their effort into that games campaign down. I was already struggling that the first day of the games, I was underperforming and it just wasn't going well. And then when I had to withdraw, I just felt like I just wasted everybody's time. And my head was in a bad space for like probably a week or two after in the terms that I just thought I failed. I failed in life. I'd wrapped up everything into this campaign and I've absolutely failed. My partner just said to me, I'm going to let you wallow for a good couple of weeks. <laughs> say whatever you want to say. It's fine. And then after that, he's like, get up, get out. Let's go. We're going. Yeah. So uh, I don't think I could have pulled myself out of that self wallow, self pity that I was going through, but I'm glad that someone around me could see what was happening and realized, no, nope, you need to get up and keep thriving. Mm. So that after surgery, my partner was really good. He, um, helped me with my recovery and I didn't want to get up I didn't want to move I was like oh I'm done with sport this is it I was 34 35 I can't remember at the time so I was old I thought there's no way I could go back again it's not possible I'm not I'm not going to stop training and in that moment he's like nope here's your knee scooter we're going we're going to fitness first the local globo gym and he took me every day and even if I didn't feel like it I would still just sit in the gym and wallow but he took me every day every day I did a little something in the gym Yep. And that every day doing rehab, every day doing machines that I could do, dumbbells, light dumbbells, mm. it actually meant that we made the open and I could actually do the open RX, which I was planning on doing scaled. Mm. And then, yeah, so that whole process is all about, you know, one day at a time, one day at a time. Don't even think about bigger picture. Don't even think about competing. It's about getting back to healthy, getting back to feeling some sort of strong. And then once you get there, Never know what happens. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And then to not only qualify for regionals, but to also then be heading back to the games. How does that, you know, yeah? How does that mindset for you? I sort of, yeah, still sorry. to this day kind of just think, <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because literally, I, one thing I'm glad I did is that I documented the process for myself visually. So I would film videos of me not being able to walk or not being able to stand on my foot. And then to like a couple months later, I was like, I'm not getting any better. This is terrible. But then seeing the videos back to where I was Mm. and where I am now made a huge difference and helped me build momentum. So once we got through the open, and I think I had to repeat the double under workout that year Mm. because um, uh, let's just say my double unders weren't great. (laughs) hadn't been practicing them Mm. um and then yeah once we made regionals regionals was okay let's just go out and have some fun wherever you land you land and it started with a one mile run or something Mm. and i hadn't done much running so i was like okay well clearly not going to make it because it's a run i'm probably gonna come dead last ended up fourth in that workout 
And I think a little bit of luck played into it. The programming that year had um, no barbell. Okay. Yeah. So me being a lighter athlete, that kind of worked in my favor. Um, not having pushed a lot of heavy weight, that luck played into my favor and I managed to what come third that year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. Fuck, that's a that's a throwback actually. I remember that one. No barbell, how much <laughs> the community hated that because it was all yeah, dumbbells yeah. and body weight. Yeah, fuck I remember that one. Oh. Yeah, but I was grateful. Yeah. But in saying that, I had those flipping heavy kettlebells. Mm. I strongly dislike those heavy kettlebells. <laughs> How oh, good. Hey, look, um, before we go too far, because we, we are rocketing through your games career and your CrossFit career, um, I, I don't want to glaze over this because it's not often we get, you know, a Commonwealth Games um, competitor coming on us. First question, and you can, this might be the dumb question that I'm going to ask, but how does that compare qualifying for New Zealand to the Commonwealth Games as opposed to qualifying for the CrossFit Games. Let's start there. How, does, how do those two compare? Do they compare? Yeah, they're, they're completely different spectrums. So when you train for an Olympic sport, you train in what you call four-year increments or quads. So it's mm. always based off Commonwealth Games or Olympic Games. Right. Um, to qualify, you build up four years for one big shot. Mm. So when you make it to that stadium, it's, it's, it's a massive deal and you put so much work into it. With the CrossFit Games, it's... I, I don't like to downplay the sport because it is hard. However, it is, CrossFit to me has always been my fun. It's my sport after sport. Yeah. Okay. If that makes sense. Yeah. So I don't, it's still a sport. It's legitimate in its own right. But for me and how I deal with it, it's my fun. Okay. So for me, it's the fun that I got to have after my real sport. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. No, 100%. But, yeah. But qualifying for either one is still like, it's, it takes a lot. The dedication, the time you have spending time to work on the skills, the physicality of it, and then the mental aspect of everything, they compare the same. The only thing that's different for me is that with gymnastics, there was very little room for error when you're in competition. Mm. Whereas CrossFit, you can afford to make some errors. Not everything has to be dead perfect. And for me, I like that little bit of, I guess, laxity in the approach. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. But... Both achievements are great. Um, making a Commonwealth Games and Olympic Games for me is like a pinnacle of a sport. Mm. And for me, that just holds a little bit more weight yeah, yeah. than I mean, making CrossFit. <laughs> fair enough. Um, going on from that was, how close were you to an Olympic squad? Very close. So Oceania mm. got one spot for 2000 Olympics and I was the alternate. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. That's tough. But even- yeah, it's horrible. That's my one biggest regret in sport was that I couldn't piece together the performance in time for the qualification. So with um, Olympics, you start qualification period two years out. Okay. And then you have to qualify one year out to be able to go to the Olympics the next year. All right. Yeah. So that's very different to CrossFit where you can qualify every year. For this mm. one, you've got one shot, two years, one year out. And you don't make that shot, you're done. Yeah. Man, yeah, no, that, that that's heavy. Like you say, yeah, they're very different on the spectrum then. So, yeah, that's good. for Thank you for breaking that down. If we go over your Commonwealth appearances, what years were you um, at the Games? So, my first year, I was 14 years old. I was the youngest on the whole New Zealand team. Um, that was 1998. Nice. Yeah, that was in Kuala Lumpur. Um, yep. I was a deer in the headlights, but not ready for that one. Mm. Uh, good experience. Then 2002, so I was 18. Um, different experience, had a better time, Mm. ended up, our team ended up being fourth, which I think is the best placing of a New Zealand gymnastics team at a Commonwealth Games Mm -hmm. and ended up making three finals, which is top eight in each thing. So that was massive for me. Yeah. Which disciplines were they, the three finals? Uh, so I was in all around final, vault final and uneven bars final, but the uneven bars final was a bit of a. A funny one. So uneven bars was my worst oh, right. <laughs> Yeah. So there was no way. I was aiming for like beam, floor, and vault. Vault was always my jam. I've got these thick thighs that were built to run yeah. and jump. Uh, once I got to uneven bar final, I think we all just laughed. We just giggled like, how did this happen? <laughs> oh, fine. Wow. And then the next Commonwealth Games, did you go weightlifting? Is it 
what I've heard. That's right. Yeah. So 20 years from my first experience at Commonwealth Games, I ended up going as a weightlifter in 2018 Gold Coast. How did that come about? Did CrossFit play a bit of a, a factor in that one? Massive part of it. Yeah. yeah. So when I started CrossFit, I couldn't squat body weight. Mm. I could throw body weight overhead. So I could like push chirp, push press body weight, but mm. I couldn't squat body weight. All right. So when I was learning this weightlifting, learning snatch and learning clean, I realized I needed to be technically proficient if I have any hope in hell of lifting a decent weight. Mm. So I ended up going and finding a coach who, who was triumph weightlifting at the time yep. and ended up just hammering out technique focused on technique, 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 not so much the heavy weights. And from there, it ended up being that my weight started to progress in a way that, well, New Zealand has some qualifications coming up. Do you want to try? Mm. You've got a passport? Like, yeah, sure. Why not? And then that's how we kind of started in the weightlifting route. And that opened up the opportunity to go to Fiji, to all these, do all these competitions. And then Commonwealth Games came up and I was like, what the heck? This is full circle. Yeah. I said, yeah, I'll do it. I mean, I laugh because after retiring from gymnastics, I thought I'm done with lycra. No more yeah. lycra, no more <laughs> get, get me out of it. Yeah. Nick minute, we're back on platform in a yeah. bloody onesie. <laughs> that is so cool. And that was over in Birmingham? No, this was um, Gold Coast. So it was the year that Tia was there. She won gold in our category. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, to take it back there, you did say you went to the Commonwealth Games at 14. That's yeah. That's crazy to me. Like, I, like mm. I, I'm not really in the gymnastics world. I don't really know how, how it operates. But, like, at 14 years old, my mom was still making my lunch. You know, I was going to school just worried about, <laughs> you know, hanging out with my mates. And, um, and you're qualifying for uh, the Commonwealth Games. What? What was early childhood like? Like, did you have like a strict routine? Because like, I know you said um, around five is when you saw um, that woman on TV and you're like, I want to do that. So it's cool that that yeah. mindset developed super early for you. But like, what is early, like early life like for you? Are you going to school or like, are you going to college? Like, yeah, just, just going <laughs> to the Commonwealth Games next week. What are you guys up to? Or That's crazy. Yes. So my life has been pretty structured ever since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. It's always been um, school, always important, homework, train. And yeah, if we're yeah. not training, or before I started gymnastics, if you're not training, you're playing outside, you know, being a kid, running, doing mm -hmm. all that stuff. And then that just carried on through to high school. And then once I started high school, it was train before school, go to school, come home, get train after school, then after training, homework, dinner, bed. Yeah. rinse and repeat and if anything it's helped me with my adult life because it's exactly the same now it's yeah. you well when i was training for the games it was train in the morning go to work train in the evening and then do whatever you can to recover before yeah. you do it all over again yeah so for me it's structure i like structure i'm a bit of a creature of habit yeah. <clears throat> so having a baby is kind of throwing that out of the window <laughs> but um, <laughs> it's just prioritizing what needs to be done in order to achieve the, the goal that you're after. And for me, I always had an overarching goal and I still always have something I'm working towards Yeah. and I try to align my schedule to suit that. Yeah, no, that's, that's phenomenal, man. And like, I hope we're not overusing it as a topic. We do talk about burnout quite a bit on here and I just wanted to ask sort of, was there any point in, in your life where you're like, I, I can't do this anymore. Like I just don't want to be, fit and active or is it's just not nah, it's always been what you want to do what you want to be i've always wanted to be fit and active but there are times when the journey gets really hard that you just think ah why am i doing this this it's just a sport mm -hmm. and so in those moments i do think it's healthy to actually take a step back and completely just disassociate for like a little time and then go back to i think i just put up a post recently about saying go back to your why why did you do it and I remember actually with CrossFit, I remember, I think it was the 2016 year that I was training and I was thinking, why am I doing this? It's like, I don't understand. And I took some time out, like quick, quick weekend away and zero training, which was unheard of at that time, <laughs> just to remember, I'm like, why did you start training? To challenge myself. Yeah. Mm. I asked for the challenge. I asked for the hard. So I should probably embrace it. 
Yeah. And so that would that would just let me go back in and slide back in to realize, oh yeah, you asked for this challenge. You asked for it, it's here. Now you gotta work for it. That's, That's awesome. awesome. Yeah, I love that mindset. Um, I think as, as someone who has had more than one reason to not uh, sort of carry on, whether it be for injury, burnout, or whatever now you like you've just touched on you're you're a new mum um and you've you're going again you're in this new masters um category but you you know you've qualified and you, you're going again um yeah how, how how's this journey from you know being a mum now getting back to being an elite level athlete yeah uh, i don't think i'm elite <laughs> definitely elite, 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 elite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's hard because I still compare myself to, so I started CrossFit pretty late, like my first CrossFit Games was when I was 30. Um, and I always just have approached it as just trying to get better day by day, right? We all do that. But then this time around, um, I've been out out of the game for two years. I still sign up for the Open regardless of whether I'm injured or not. So I've been injured, I think, three years out of the 11 years I've done the Open, mm -hmm. but I've always done it in some capacity. Awesome. 2022, I had two surgeries. So I had hip surgery and then I had baby through C-section. Um, so 2023 was, I did the open, I think it was nine weeks out from having baby and I managed to do that RX and that was a win. Awesome. This year, it's purely just to um, do better than last year. Okay. I think I've done that. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, so I think I've done that. Um, I don't actually have any aspirations to even do Torian if I was to qualify. What I do have is the desire to feel strong. Okay. So once having baby, I felt like, I, I know a lot of mums go through this. You just feel like a loss of sense of self. Mm. And I'm still, I still struggle with that today. Um, but what helps me feel like I have control over what's going on around me is if I feel strong. Mm. So for me, a little bit of consistency in going to the gym helps me feel strong. And that level of training means that I can do quarterfinals and I can do all the other um events that come as a result of it mm -hmm. i will never say no to something if it comes along i think that opportunities come around for a reason but this is just a see how you go kind of deal yeah 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 i don't train as often as i would like to and definitely not at the hours i would like to mm. um but i train to a level that i still challenge myself yeah i think it's um that's good that you said that we've had a few people like i'll use james newbury for example exactly the same thing he he crushed himself you know um to be this amazing athlete that he is today but if you look back at um, maybe now is different that he's on that team but when we were talking to him you know his training back then was so different probably to what you're doing now where he took a back step and he's just trying to be trying to be happy in his training and trying to trying to be the best version of himself so i think that's really important that you'd say that that um because i'm sure there's a lot of people who still think they have to go in there and smash out four or five hours a day when really if you you can still achieve this this level of um athleticism with just taking a back step and enjoying it so i think that's massive mm. yeah enjoyment factor is a big thing it mm. keeps you coming back right and you know that if you're enjoying it then you're going to put a put forth a better effort and get more out of your session mm. oh definitely definitely you gotta have um gotta have something to, to get out of bed in the morning for you know absolutely mm. um yeah. We did have a chat with uh, Maddie Sturt, and um, I asked her what her most memorable um, moment in CrossFit was, and it was quite funny because it involved you. Um, mm. She was saying her most memorable moment in CrossFit was when Tia first won the Games, and she said that she was with you and turned to you, and you were bawling your eyes out, <laughs> <laughs> and so she started crying. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> I thought yeah. I, just, I just thought it was a. Fan. I cry a lot. I don't know if you've seen any of the footage. I cry a lot. <laughs> Happy tears is like my jam. <laughs> oh, go for it. Do do you? Um, <laughs> but if I can bring it back, I would love to know what your most memorable moment in CrossFit has been. Oh, my most memorable moment in CrossFit. Um, for me, it would have to be making it back into the Coliseum after my Achilles rupture in 2017. Nice. Awesome. I didn't care where I placed that year. Didn't give a damn. Mm, the yeah. fact that I had made it back and stepped foot in the Coliseum and managed to make myself proud was massive. Yeah. 
Oh. Yeah, that was a huge win for me. And I think there's a video like at the end of, uh, I can't remember what the workout was called, but it was had parallel handstand push-ups and bloody heavy kettlebell deadlifts again. <laughs> Um, an overhead lunge and I crossed the finish line I turned around to the camera and I just said I finished the games <laughs> yeah like I did it <laughs> I finished the games I went through all that adversity and I managed to finish the games and I hope that in that moment that I did those that helped me proud as well yeah that was pretty much it yeah yeah oh. 100% and then T and winning oh gosh that just topped everything <laughs> off <laughs> I have to admit that year was pretty special. I think for the Australians and New Zealanders, we were very quite close um, around that time, and it was just it was something pretty special. Yeah, twenty seventeen. Kev Manuel was there. No, I don't think he was there was he that the, year. He was, he was around there. But I remember that. Yeah, around that time it was pretty cool. For it was it was fun. Like I think I guess from two thousand fifteen to to well, now currently but like seeing the growth of australian and new zealand athletes finally getting recognized for being the athletes that they are so yeah definitely right around that time was massive for for us blowing up in the sport it's been good yeah it was huge it was good fun too 100 mm, <laughs> percent. um you've touched on it a few times um mainly your partner but and i guess we sort of all know the answer to this but how important is that support group around you being since day dot competing at commonwealth games to now yeah having a good team around you actually it it's so important you could never do something on your own it's it always takes a village i guess mm. um i've always had really good support teams from my first coach adam perry luke star and um the coaches and gyms that i've trained at and then my partner who's been my absolute rock who's always been the voice of reason um yeah i, th I think it's very important to have someone that's willing to have the stern conversations with you mm. uh, don't surround yourself with yes people like mm -hmm. you've got to have the people that will tell you the downright truth you are not good enough do this or this is something that you could work on you need to prioritize it um i don't like being around people that say yes all the time or just you know blow smoke up your behind saying oh you're good you're gonna make it just because you're trying i'm like no mm. everyone's trying tell yeah. me the truth <laughs> yeah so i think real honest people and authentic people uh important to have around and those that are skilled in their field of expertise very nice. important don't waste time trying to guess and go on youtube and search out things just go find some good solid scientific background mm. people that will actually help you get to where you want to go in a more efficient manner yeah yeah i love that a good coach doesn't tell you what you want to hear tells you what you need to hear so yeah. i think it's quite important and and finding people courageous enough to be that honest and truthful with you mm is you yeah. know, far and few between, I, I can imagine. Um, yeah, touching on your partner, like when he um, brought you out of that hole when you came back from your from your injury, but I've got to say, to be the high level athlete that you are, there has to be some sort of relentless switch within your own mind um, to commit to put the work in, do the effort, do the job. Where do you think that comes from? Where, where along your life has that been instilled in you? Because I don't think that's something that can be taught. It's, it's instilled in you. Yeah, I, my mum has always been, she raised three children all under the age of three, like by herself, solo mum, who she's always instilled in us that, you know, you work hard and you always find a way. Mm. If you want something, you find a way. And that's been drilled into me since I was a kid. And like... When I was five, I knew that's what I wanted to do and I had to find a way. Mm -hmm. So it's always been that for me from the start. So uh, that's just pretty much ingrained in me from the start. However, to be able to stick to it is another thing. That's where the tools of making plans, setting a goal, putting it aside, making a plan and chipping away bit by bit comes into play. Mm. Yeah, I love that. And I love that you mentioned your mum. That's sort of where I was leading because little birdie told me, and I hope the birdie's right, that she herself has a quite a quite an impressive uh, list of accomplishments. Do you want to sort of run us through your your role models growing up? Obviously, mum. Yeah, my mum. She was a um, she's from born in Fiji. Ended up going to university in Hawaii um, on academic scholarship, but also played basketball. So she's she was pretty athletic. And I actually remember when I was a kid, mum used to get up and go running to like the local gas station just every morning just so that she could get some exercise in 
And I remember that I would get up and go running with her. So I think that's when my fitness journey started. Yeah. <laughs> was back then, I just wanted to hang out with my mum. How that's good. awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, now, we can't finish this without going over one thing. You're a gladiator now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Talk us I'm through. I'm gladiator. Yeah. <laughs> how crazy is that? Talk us through. How did this come about for you to end up on that show? Oh my goodness. So I don't know if a lot of people have watched Gladiators back in the 90s. I used to watch Gladiators Me. as well. And yeah, <laughs> I wanted to be a gladiator. I wanted to stand up and duel and smack people mm. off things and try and run up the Eliminator. But it was yeah. such an awesome show of people that looked really athletic, uh, but everyday people that just wanted to do something hard. And I really liked that. And then to get the opportunity to actually even audition for it. So the casting director actually just slid, slid into my DMs and said, hey, you know, are you interested in trialing for a fitness um, production, you know, competition production? And I said, oh, yeah, sure. And then he called me. He's like, yeah, so it's for gladiators. Inside, I was like, oh, my gosh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, play it cool, play yeah. it cool. Oh, maybe. Yeah. And he, he just said, oh, yeah, would you come and show up for the um, fitness testing? I said, yeah, sure. I said, but you do realize I'm old and I've just had a kid. Yeah. I think I was seven months postpartum and, and he's like, yeah, yeah, they're all fine. There's someone older than you. Just come and see how it goes. So I did. Sorry. One second. I'm going to probably sneeze. Yeah, right. <coughs> what did I do? At the like... <laughs> Get that out. <laughs> um, Bless you. Yeah. So I wasn't actually going to go because I said to my partner again, freak, he's come and clutch a lot of times. <laughs> I said to him, oh, I shouldn't even go. They're not going to pick me. I mean, I'm not the traditional TV looking type person. Um, I've just had a baby. I've got a mum tum. And he goes, hey, when have you ever said no to a challenge? Mm. And I was like, dang it. You're right. <laughs> okay. So I better go. So I went, did the fitness testing. And I'm so glad that my body was in a some sort of shape that I could actually get through pretty well. Mm. Did the um, interview test and then few weeks later got the call say hey we're just calling wondering if you'd like to be a gladiator yeah. and I'll, again so i was cool. like oh yep yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and then the whole process came around um, about uh what, what your character name is and everything else around it but it was pretty dang awesome how how involved are you with like all of that like your character name your slogan your look i guess like how involved are you in um sort of making up the character of the tv show yeah so we don't get i didn't get to make up my name or the um costume per se however they do give you a character and it's modeled around pretty much your type of personality right and so yeah. mine was quite punchy a little bit sparky and mm. it suited me pretty well um it had a lot of gymnastics elements to it and the way that i moved what was different for me was the smack talk oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> so i'm really quite an introvert at heart um but um when you go out there and you've got to start throwing shade and not so much throwing shade but just trying to psych them out mm. i found that i came up with some of the stuff you'd say and it comes out of your mouth and you're like oh crap did i really just say that <laughs> But yeah, no, I ended up embracing the character pretty well and I think it came across all right, yeah. Do they, I wasn't do they, hated by many, so that's good. Do they do a couple of takes? Like you'll say something and they'll be like, no, nah, that wasn't it. Do it again? <laughs> or is it all what no. you see is what you get? What you see is what you get, yeah. yeah. So everyone asks, is it is it staged? Do you have, mm. is it like, is it real? I'm like, no, it's, it's real. It's mm. physical. It's um, really draining as well because you're filming all day. Um, but the physicality of the whole gladiators is real. Mm. Throwing people down those pyramids, I'm so yeah. glad I wasn't being thrown and I got to throw them down because <laughs> taking those hits is hard. But um, it was the first time tackling for me on Powerball and things like that. And that was, yeah. I freaking love the contact. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't think I would, but I really did. Yeah. W WNRL, sign her up. There we go. <laughs> Calm was saying, he, even he was blown away with the contact because all the, uh, one of the boys, I can't remember, but like, <laughs> just grab one of the contestants and jump with them i was like that just sounds <laughs> intense yeah it really was um especially on pyramid when you've got a you're at the top and you're throwing them down and the clever ones pull the pull you down with them yeah mm. so i had one girl absolutely just try and nail buckle my knees oh. and you know it's a 
somewhat friendly and then all of a sudden they try to come at you you're like oh no compared to the comes <laughs> <laughs> we're going <laughs> yeah man that 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 show is crazy oh, i love it man i remember watching it and so i grew up in england and i was watching mm-hmm. it in, in in england in the 90s and yeah i remember i was like this guy called wolf and then i remember diesel came to our school man, i love that show like and as a kid you just like these guys are superheroes like these <laughs> these guys are next level so it's it's funny now like being older and then seeing you guys are actually humans whereas when yeah. i was a kid i was like you guys are fucking beasts man like i want to be <laughs> that but um yeah no it must be for real that must be so cool Still uh, yeah um who who would be your favorite uh coaster to team up with oh you can't ask that question <laughs> <laughs> Clip it. <laughs> because i have to be honest there was what 13 of us and mm. We all got along so well. It was mm. ridiculous. And I know it sounds cheesy, but you don't get together with a bunch of misfits because that's what we are. We're a <laughs> bunch of misfits. And we just gelled so well. And um, the dynamic on set was just amazing. Mm. It was so good. Um, if I had to team up with anyone, however, I can't pick one. I no. really can't pick one. <laughs> I thought we were going to get her there. <laughs> no, that's I can't okay. pick one. Everyone has their, like, it's like their superpowers, you know? Yeah. You need them for different occasions. I, d- I don't think there's any single one of you because I, I did manage to download VPN, watch a few episodes, and uh, yeah. I don't think there's any single one of you that I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll take them on. Mm. So, nah. Yeah. I'm not going to lie, though. I was the smallest gladiator of the bunch, and then whenever I had to take on um, a rather bigger athlete than myself and tackle them, my heart was pounding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, some of the contestants were like athletic man i was looking i was like they could be probably on the other side yeah yeah Yeah. they're legit legit people and what's even better is that some of the ones that don't look very athletic Mm. were athletic they just don't have the aesthetic of what you'd expect an athlete to look like Mm. however it just goes to show that you don't have to look athletic to be athletic don't Mm. judge a book by its cover and that's what i love about the show yeah and this, this probably shows the the change in athleticism over the years. If you go back to the 90s, the everyday person was an everyday person, whereas now there's a lot more. Um, you can just go on YouTube, you can go on Instagram, you can go to your gym. There's a lot more information out there how to be athletic. So, yeah, yeah. shows the t- difference in times as well. Hmm. Um, anyway, look, we've probably taken up enough of your time um, so far. I mean, it's it's not every day you get an athlete as accomplished as yourself come on and there's so many areas to cover um i'm sure we could dive into a lot more but um thank you first of all for coming on i know there's a bit of back and forth getting the getting the time yeah, right sorry and, about that oh, look, i guess that's life hey we're all busy i actually wanted to bring that up it goes to show that we only see you through a screen most of us probably only see you through a screen but you you are a person and you do have um you know your own life to get to get through so i'm glad you brought that up in the dm saying that hey, that's life, isn't it? And I was like, well, it is for everyone. Yep. That is life. We're all juggling something. <laughs> exactly. Um, but anyway, I'll throw it over to Beef, um, how we're ending this podcast. Yeah, so we have asked our previous guest, who was, uh, who was Georgia Pryor, to uh, give us a question for you. Obviously, she didn't know it was for you. But um, Georgia Pryor would like to know, what is the most helpful thing that you own? The most helpful thing that I've... That, that you, you own. Oh, that I own. Mm. Oh, dang. That's, that's a, oh. <laughs> so uh, I'd have to say the most helpful thing that I own, it's going to be really quite just superficial would have to be my phone. That's <laughs> purely because answer. it is the source of information. It is the source of photos of which is stored mm. of all my daughter. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah, that's. My That's phone fine. is yeah. probably the most important thing at the moment. Yeah. If I'm honest, I agree with you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Keeps you connected, source of information at the reach of your fingertips, yep. and stores everything. Yeah. Too handy. 100%. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the correct answer. Ding, ding. There you oh, go. Gosh. <laughs> Anyway, look, hey, we'll get your question off camera, but uh, okay. we'll look to end things there. Uh, is there anyone... You've already given enough people a shout out, but is there anyone you want to give a shout out before we end this? Um, yeah, I'd like to like thank my gym as well, CrossFit Botany, for helping me get through this stuff and um, just enjoying training. And I hope I just want to wish everyone a good luck and 
hopefully they do well with quarterfinals and semifinals and just keep following through the season. Mm. And we'll see you at Torian either competing or not? Pretty much, yeah. Awesome. Wicked. Sounds good. Nice. <laughs> we'll put a camera in your face. We'll get it done. <laughs> How good. Lovely. Hey, thanks a lot, Alethea. We uh, really appreciate your time coming on, having a yarn with us, and uh, we will sign it off there. Mm, sounds good. Cheers, guys. Beauty. Awesome. Thanks, boys. Thanks, <laughs> boys.